morning everyone. Now this is not going to be for the faint hide. We are going super experimental today. Combining lots of abstract techniques over the duration of two projects. Now you might find it handy if you time them so they go in between therefore things are drying while you can work on the other one. Do keep that in mind and I will go through it during our class. But here's a lowdown of the materials for the first project that we're going to be doing. So first of all I've got a piece of cardboard which I've primed underneath, hopefully you can see here. You will need a fairly thick piece of cardboard so that it doesn't spring up as soon as the tension because um, things get a bit stiff on top of it. Then you're going to need some open weave fabric, so you can see I've got some bits here. I've been busy ripping apart to try and expand the weave and make it more tactile. Okay, you can have a few bits, I've just got you know, two because it's what I've cut up. Um, from that you can see I've got some scissors. Now we're going to need some PVA glue to glue that to obviously the board, so I've got some PVA glue there to do that. Then we're going to work up some thick, basically texturised surface acrylic colours. So for that I've got some talcum powder, some PVA glue I'm going to be using again, and some different acrylic colours. So for this I'm going for all the metallics. I've got a black here, I've got a, a brass, and then I've got a gold. You can use any colours you want, but just try and make sure that they're colours that are going to look good next to one another. Now after that, oh, and don't forget a pot, you're going to need a pot to mix this up in because this gets really gooey, okay? And probably a decent old paintbrush is going to get completely napalmed by the process. Um, then we're going to be going into some kind of texturised pouring solution. So with the pouring, we're going to again need the acrylic, you're going to need the glue, you're going to need some water, so I've got a water and spray bottle as well. Um, and you're going to need a container to mix that up in. Um, now with the pouring, because we're going to texturise it, I've got a plastic bag as well. So that the plastic bag will allow me to add a whole new depth to this technique. Watch and learn. It's going to be an interesting ride. Let's get going. Right, so first of all I need to glue down my texturised material. If you want to, you can add more than I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep it simple so that it's fairly quick and easy. When you're gluing this down, you can use a PVA glue or you could use your glue gun if you wanted to. But um, it needs to be thoroughly well bonded to the surface and allowed to dry. I'm gonna just go for the standard PVA glue. So I've got some here and I'm gonna use a card. I quite like using a card to apply this. Now for this, because we're going for an abstract picture, Oh, that's a bit dusty, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna just going to keep this simple. So I'm going to take my piece of board down because I can see this is already going to start moving when I start gluing and playing around with the surface. So keep it nice and firm. Um, think about keeping this simple. So with the material, you could use circles, you can create spirals, it's completely up to you. If this is new to you and you just want to play, go with anything you want. There's, there's no particular right or wrong with this. All right, let's get some glue down. Um, and make sure that you get this a really good covering of glue because it needs to be strong so that the acrylic doesn't pour it off the surface, pull it off the surface, pour it, because I'm pouring. I'm not even listening to what I'm doing, am I? So I'm putting some glue down on my surface. Okay, I'm then gonna get my piece of material and just apply some downward pressure, like so. Okay, let's get this all stuck down, nice and stiff, really good covering. No such thing as too much glue in this case. But do remember that if you do put it on as thick, like I am, it is going to take some time to dry off and be ready for the next stage of work. To be quite honest, I'm probably going to get a little bit more of the fabric because this looks quite nice. Uh, I reckon it would be interesting if I expanded 
texture a little bit more in this artwork. I, I'm going by instinct and that's what I want you to try. Don't worry about you know a certain design or anything like that. Trust your instincts and just go by eye. If in doubt, like I said, you go for a spiral or a circle. You can't go too wrong. You can always move things around at this stage. All right, let's get some more fabric. Right, so I've just quickly stuck these down. It's all pretty wet, but it doesn't matter because it's all gonna mix in with the next layer. So the next layer we're looking at doing is making a really thick acrylic paint. Um, and I'm gonna do this using, I don't know, should we, go, should we go for brass? I've got brass paint. So I've got a container there. I've got some brass acrylics. It can be any make you want. I've got some kids PVA glue that I'm gonna be using as well. And then I've got some talcum powder, any brand works, you know. It doesn't have to be that one. It was just that was cheap and on a deal. So don't feel like you have to do that. You will also need a bit of water as well. So I've got a spray bottle with some water that I can empty out. Um, obviously a paintbrush for um, mixing everything is also valuable. And um, when I can find the one that I just, there it is, covered in pink paint earlier, I will use that one. So oh, let's make the thick paint to go on top of this while that's drying. Okay, it's all, all gonna go together, it doesn't really matter. Now to make the paint, which is gonna be a really thick texturized paint, first of all, you need to get your talcum powder. So, I've got a yogurt pot here. I'm gonna fill the yogurt pot up to about halfway with talcum powder. Probably gonna look like a special effect on the camera amount of talcum powder's coming off. Run. Uh, how are we going with that? Yeah, it looks about halfway. Let's seal that up. Then I'm going to get the PVA glue. And for the PVA glue, you want to do like uh, a third of the quantity of the talcum powder. So I'm just using by eye. You can measure if you wanted to. But you want more talc, less PVA. I reckon probably about that much. I always add a bit more. Find that it's not enough. Then get your brush and give that a bit of a stir just to see if you've got enough quantity. Now you can see how mine, it reminds me a lot of when you're making bread and you've got too much flour in the mix. It's not very liquidy, it just means you need to add a little bit more PVA glue. So add a little bit more in there. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water. stir because remember the water is going to make this a little bit more liquidy you can see it's starting to get very like a thick dough make sure you have got everything stirred in because it's easy to miss some and then when you're painting you end up with a bit of talcum powder pop up on your picture which isn't ideal I'm going to add a little bit more PVA just move it out the more PVA the runnier the consistency becomes so it's better to start with it too thick and then gradually increase that PVA if you need to. Now how thick you want to make this is completely up to you. There's no kind of perfect mixture, it's your choice. Once you've got that, then you need to get your acrylic paint and blob some in. The talcum powder does bleach out the colour, so if you want the acrylic quite strong, you will need a bit more acrylic then I'm probably going to do, I'm going to do a little bit at a time, just like we did with the other, with the mix basically. You can see how that mix is diluting the brassy shade out of the acrylic paint. Much more paler. Add a bit more acrylic, it should boost the colour. It'll also change the consistency slightly, so it'll make it a little bit more runny. That looks like a pretty good consistency for my liking. If you wanted to thicken it up because you found it was too runny, you just increase the amount of talcum powder in the mix. If you want it thinner and runnier, you increase the amount of um, PVA glue in the mix. Apply some on the surface. Now you can use a palette knife. You can use a brush if you want to. I quite like the old... Um, basically voucher cards. Is it voucher cards? Gift cards? So I, I think you get a nice coverage with that. 
over that or if it fails as an artist I can always become a plasterer so hey ho uh, let's look at that so I can smooth things in I can texturize my surface my background which I'm gonna be doing around here to even out my design I can actually make it so it, it kind of raises up from any lumps and bumps smoothly if I want to so you can smooth out some of the textures or you can make it really textured you can see I can use your card in different ways now I'm going to work the picture generally evenly I've got another really texturized technique to bring out in a moment so I do want to give myself room to work that up but do need to also unify that fabric texture into the artwork background so do try and work it as a whole but not overwork it easy said than done isn't it usually things like that and you can scrape through and you can get some really nice effects Move it out a bit up here. Ooh. And I reckon a bit over here as well. Now because it's got the acrylic in it, it dries fairly fast. Not so fast that you can't work it because if you want to thicken up acrylics before added things in like plaster of Paris and you you have literally minutes to work in the ter surface texture that you want to generate. Um, so you can see here I'm just using the brush to manipulate the fabric and get different shapes. But um, it's fast but not so fast you can't work the surface. It's a really kind of nice mixture of building up texture but not having to work super hard to get that texture in before the acrylic goes off and you can all scratch in so that scratch room create textures that way if you want to I'm not quite going for it on this style work but feel free to have a go if that's what you want to do right so you can allow this to dry um, go and have a cup of tea or a biscuit or you can work on something else, like I'm going to be going on to the other project now. And then come back to this once it's dry, ready for the last layer of texturization, And then probably a little bit of fine tuning with some paint. I'll see you in a little while. Bye! So I've come back to my board, which I had my open weave fabric stuck down using PVA glue. Then my mixture of thickening up the acrylic paint using talcum powder. Okay, and a bit of PVA glue and applying it using a card. So you get all these different texturized marks. And then we're gonna build up some areas where we're gonna use like a, a liquid pouring acrylic combination. Okay, so keep it fresh, keep it interesting. Now with the pouring, it's not just about the colors of the pouring, it's gonna be the texture that we build. And that's where we've got the plastic bag. So first of all, you need to get a container. Okay, and we need to add in some PVA glue. I'm gonna take some turquoise acrylic paint and put that in my yogurt pot just like so I'm then going to take some PVA glue sealed and add that in now what I would do just like we did with the others is a little bit slowly added in so that you can see um, how much you're adding and whether it works and I'm just using the end of a brush you can use anything you want, you can use a stick as long as it's clean and we're trying to get to a pouring consistency so a pouring consistency is when you literally tilt and you can see that it pours gently with this you will need to add a little bit of water but just a little bit, not too much if you're using proper pouring medium you will find that um, it gets a little bit more glossier than I think this technique uses and it also, it's a bit more harder wearing 
It reminds me a lot of nail polish. I'm gonna add a little bit more glue into that. So the PVA glue will give it that glossy finish and it'll also make it a little bit more liquidy because usually acrylics are known for being fairly thick. Oh, that's pretty good. Now with pouring what you can do is you can have multiple different colours on the go and you pour one colour on top of the other and then you use gravity to tilt them around. With this I'm going to do something a little bit different. I want the consistency of the pouring, so you can see how thick it is on the surface of the card. Then I'm going to grab my card, and I'm going to keep it quite high still. I just want to work out a few patches where I've got you know a bit of bubble and indentation. And then I'm going to put plastic on top of it. Okay, so let's pour out a few areas make this interesting and I'm, I'm kind of just doing the odd bit here and there you could do a lot more than I'm doing and I quite like that it's poured in and it's a little bit wonky and organic it doesn't have to be perfect with this technique you can see if I pick this up right now let's get off the board that it moves that means that we've got the right consistency of PVA glue to acrylic. It's quite slow, it's like sloth paint, but it does do it. And then put that down. So if I take my piece of plastic and I'm going to cut, well, actually, I'll just rip off a bit because I don't need all this plastic and can reuse this. I'm going to stick that in and I'm going to squidge it into the paint. So can you see how much that's raised up? Squidged in just like that. Okay. Now to me, I reckon that will look unbalanced. It'll look like I need to bring something down here. So I'm going to quickly mix up the same recipe again and do the same down here to balance the flow of how the pattern is working across the surface of the picture. Right, so you can see here how I've put down my plastic um, on top of my wet pouring mixture of acrylic and PVA with a little bit pinch of water. And um, I'm now just using a little bit of tape to tape it in place. You don't necessarily have to do this, it's just if you want the plastic to fold a certain way, you might find it easier to tape it down. Okay, You can as well till, if you've got other colours, you could have put different colours in, mixed up a few different colours. I'm, I'm keeping this relatively simple because of time. Um, put other colours in and then put the plastic on top as well and to add a whole new effect and dynamic nature to this type of artwork. But I'm going to put this to one side and allow this to dry. You could use a hairdryer if you want to to speed up the drying or put it in the sun if you've got a lovely summer's day. Right, so I've let mine dry off a bit. It's not as dry as it should be, but it, I thought it's good enough to show you the next stage. So what you need to do, and probably you need to give yours a little bit more time and a warmer environment. It's a little bit chilly today to be doing this. But you peel off your plastic, just like so. And you should end up with some really pretty patterns. You can see it's starting to happen around here. My, my paint's a bit too wet over there, but it gives you the rough idea. Okay, so once we've got that, then we can start painting and working it up. So let's keep this a little bit interesting, shall we? Um, I'm gonna grab some of the white that I had earlier on top of my texturized pink. Now I don't wanna cover it completely. I just want some bits here and there. The whole point of putting the pink in there was to give me some colour to play against. You will find that you have to be incredibly careful not to cover it because it's very easy with acrylics as it's a thick paint to put down too much too quickly. Now there is no plan in my head, I'm literally working on instinct here, being playful and seeing what happens. 
not being too worried about the end result. A lot of this type of painting is about layering. Let's add a little bit of a dark tone. And metallic black. Working a little bit more of a depth. Illusion of depth. Playing up that mixing of colours on the surface. Right, there you go. Very simple starter into abstract, texturising, overlapping various different techniques. Now it's your turn. You'll probably find that you're going to need a bit of time for this because it's about allowing bits to dry. I, I did kind of radically move this through this quite quickly. But um, see what you like. You'll find that you'll probably mess up in the first few runs. Do some tasters, some little mini samples if you want to, to just get a feel for what the effects are like. And then build up into, you know, a structure that you like. That can be realistic and using it in the background, or it could be more abstract and very loose like this one here. Go and have some experimental fun. I'll see you later. Bye everyone.